Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry as fuck, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 97. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter from the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. A little bit of a video producer here with some local uh, groups, including the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and all kinds of stuff over at IndieWrestling.us. With me on the line, as usual, is the man down in San Antonio, Texas, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, taking on WWE Fireys uh, any day now, from according to the Indie Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch that to find out what's going on. The there. assumptions from the from the rest of Mayhem show. Yes, hey, exactly, you know. exactly. Eamon Payton at Eamon Two, please on the Twitter. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Uh, really glad to be back. Uh, talking more about indie wrestling as always. It's all it's always fun doing this show. So I'm very excited. Definitely a lot of fun stuff. A lot of interesting news throughout the week, the weekend, and our friend Matt Carlin's doing the column around the indies at IndieWrestling.us. We'll touch on some of the stuff happening around that as well. Uh, so uh, go please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this and other shows that we have going on on iTunes, YouTube, Speaker. Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and everything else. Check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, Mayhem Show on the Twitter, and uh, all, so much more. You can join us live dot wrestlingmayhemshow.com every Tuesday night. This show usually starts around 11 p.m. Eastern time, more or less, or join us earlier at 9 p.m. for the main Wrestling Mayhem Show for over three hours of wrestling talk and some other topics as well. Uh, so let's get into it. Eamon, who are we talking to this week? Well, uh, this was my week for a guest, and I'm uh, very excited to have someone on who has a bit of relation to someone who we had on actually not too long ago, uh, Mr. Kurt Matthews. He is the other half of uh, the Pump Patrol, uh, here to talk about some of the stuff he's been doing lately uh, in the world of professional wrestling. Very excited to have him on. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Mr. Jared Wayne. Jared, how are you this evening? Oh, doing awesome. Doing awesome, man. Great to Great to be with you guys. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, so I guess the best way to kind of start this off uh, that we normally start off the show with is uh, kind of an icebreaker question of sorts, uh, you know, to kind of get people an idea of, you know, how you got into pro wrestling. I guess the best way to ask is uh, uh, what's your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? My first ever memory of watching professional wrestling, just uh, not that it started that way, but just Probably one of the, I know people are going to, I'm not really going to show how young I am here, <laughs> but uh, not that it started that way as far as I me mean, first watching it, but I can remember uh, the King of the Ring with uh, Steve Austin and Jake the Snake. I can remember uh, probably one of the biggest moments, of course, the, the Hogan rock match at WrestleMania um, sticks out, I guess, in my mind is one of those. I can, you know, I can definitely remember first watching that, which was, this is, like I said, this wasn't all that long ago, but uh, as far as one of my first memories, that's pretty unforgettable. Awesome, definitely. And was, and was there anything particular about the, those, you know, memories that kind of stuck out to you as, you know, stuff about professional wrestling that really caught your attention? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially, you know, with my age and kind of, Catching everything right at the beginning of the Attitude Era and whatnot, just uh, just completely in your face. Back then, uh, it felt like to me they let a lot more stuff fly on TV, of course, than they do now. Uh, and so it was so in your face and so intense and uh, just really captured you regardless of whether you were a child or an adult, you were, you were going to watch for sure. Definitely. Uh, so to transition from watching pro wrestling to actually deciding to get into professional wrestling, uh, how did you first sort of find out that you could become a professional wrestler and, and, and where was it that you kind of got your start? Man, I, uh, I actually didn't, I mean, I watched wrestling when I was, when I was younger, you know, seven, eight years old, uh, kind of stopped, just didn't flick over to the channel, I guess for, for many, many years. Uh, when I was 15, of course I did, I did, uh, I played football and everything like to play football and baseball in high school and whatnot. When I was 15, I started to go to indie events, uh, saw a couple of flyers uh, around town and had a few friends that were going and they finally convinced me, Hey man, you know, just come check it out. And I'm like, ah, this, 
these aren't the guys on TV. Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm probably just not going to enjoy this at all. And ended up, ended up dragging me in, and I couldn't stop going. <laughs> I was completely <laughs> entertained with it, and totally infatuated with uh with how talented these guys were and uh never put it down since and talked to one of the promoters uh right as I turned 18 and three of us got our start right there awesome and then you said you kind of athletic background going in with football uh what was it like sort of your first couple of days of training uh did, did you expect how the training was going to be did you was you from uh from starting to train to become a wrestler well you know of course when you when you're at first you do anything athletic whatsoever of course you know i was everybody knows i was i was 265 when i started wrestling so uh you know playing football and whatnot you automatically come in with the attitude of ah you know i can i can you know coaches they run our they run our ass off all the time it's no big deal you know i can handle this and uh, I was so, so wrong. Never have I ever been so sore in every piece of my body in my life. And it totally, totally different from anything, anything I've ever done. Definitely. Uh, you mentioned, uh, that when you kind of started off, you were 265. I know, uh, something that, uh, you brought up before and, and obviously it definitely an influence in you being a part of the pump patrol is, is the, is your significant weight loss, uh, uh, uh looking, you know, from, you know, when you kind of got your start to now, it, it you know, it's a, it seems like a completely different person. Uh, was it, was, what was that kind of, what kind of inspired that, that, that significant weight loss for you? Man, I mean, it's a, it's a combination of a couple things. Uh, you know, I had a guy, one of the guys that had hand in training me, his name was Wayne Knight. Uh, he trained over at, uh, at Sean's school in San Antonio. And, uh, the thing he told me basically after a couple of months after I started was, you know, I want to, I want to get you in the ring. I want to start doing some positive things with you because I think you've got something to offer. Help me help you. And I understood exactly what he meant. I, I grasped it. And I think because I was really starting to get into it, uh, for some reason or another, that's pretty much what, uh, what kind of jump started me. And I can still remember, that Christmas, uh, 2008, uh, was actually after eating Christmas dinner about the sixth time that day, uh, <laughs> that night, just looking at myself and basically just being disgusted with myself. And, you know, the way I did it, I pretty much started off angry, you know, just, just getting on the treadmill and watching fat jiggle, basically That's how it, how it started and, you know, going to work and eating, a can of tuna fish and a bottle of water all day long, you know, and of course that's not, I definitely wouldn't recommend that to anybody, but that's pretty much, uh, how everything got going. I was just frustrated with, you know, I had tried dieting. It's not like I'd never tried to, to, to lose weight before because you know, I played sports and everything, but you know, uh, just, just, uh, finally getting pissed off enough to do something about it was the key. Definitely. And, and I think a lot of people will, kind of throw out a lot of times about what makes pro wrestling uh sort of, sort of different from like sports and stuff like that is uh that it's kind of an image thing as well did you did you notice that i guess when you had that significant weight loss did you know did more opportunities i guess open up for you because of that would you say oh absolutely absolutely it's such a it's such a cosmetic business and then people that aren't in that type of business have no idea they think oh who are these guys that this guy shaves his legs and shaves his armpit. What, what, what is this? You know, and you know, it's, it's such a cosmetic business. And the fact that, you know, everything that you put in your mouth, you think about how your trunks are going to fit the next week. I mean, it's, it's that serious and, you know, which is good, good for, especially for a guy like me who, you know, walked down the road of, of being extremely overweight. And so, you know, week to week, I'm, I'm, not only in my keep in mind that um, I have to keep up with myself. Also, you know, I've got this, I'm working this gimmick here where, you know, you have no choice. <laughs> so I don't give my, I don't give my, I don't, yeah, I mean, I pretty much uh, set myself up for that, but 
you know, I pretty much have no choice but to uh, to hammer down and, and make it happen. Absolutely. And then speaking of that as well, uh, obviously, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff you're doing right now is with uh, your tag team partner, Kurt Matthews, who mm-hmm. we had on about a month right. or so back uh, on patrol. Uh, what's it been like uh, teaming with Kurt? I know you were uh, originally, the original Pump Patrol was you and AJ Summers, but uh, right. uh, obviously the stuff you guys are doing now, you guys seem to be breaking out uh, a bunch of different places. Uh, what's it been like teaming with Kurt and doing the, doing this whole stuff with the Pump Patrol? Man, I listened to, I listened to Kurt's uh uh, podcast and you know his interview and he he was right on point. I mean we we pretty much connected right off the bat. Uh, right after AJ uh, AJ was had a back injury and then ended up of course going to the police academy and everything after that. But right after his back injury, I was at uh, I was backstage at Reality of Wrestling's Summer of Champions uh, two years ago, and I uh, you know was at, at ROW was taking a single singles role again and everything. And they had, they had, you know, very, very light on tag teams. And, uh, basically that night, you know, one of the producer was like, Hey man, uh, you know, what do you think we can do about the pump patrol? And I said, immediately I, I had already been talking to, uh, to Kurt. And I said, immediately, I, I told him I, I got a guy. I, I, it's already it's already in mind. All I got to do is message this guy, and I'm pretty sure it's going to hit off. And um, we have such similar personalities. It, it you know a lot of times two guys get separately in the ring, and they have to really think about what they're doing, and they have to plan this out and plan that out. We, I mean, even without watching uh, each other a whole lot, we we know our moves step for step, and we know how we're going to treat certain situations and it really, really helps in the ring. I think, uh, we translate each other pretty well. Awesome. And you mentioned, uh, reality of wrestling, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Booker T's wrestling, uh, promotion down in Houston. Uh, they seem to be, you know, doing amazing stuff lately, especially their production level, the stuff they're putting out online. Uh, and, and I believe tele- on television as well. Uh, what's it like working for, for Booker T and reality of wrestling? Man, it's, uh, it's, in a way, you know, you'll never you'll never step into a place who's more concerned about getting you ready for where you need to be and where they want you to be more than reality of wrestling. That that place is is so keen on on teaching guys how to work T V matches, how to get in there and, and tell a story in five, six minutes, how to go in and, and you know put together the total package. You know, one, it's one thing to go in and work a 25-minute indie match, but it's another to be prepared to step out into a WWE ring and do exactly what they're expecting you to know how to do without them explaining everything. And that's that's so much the key of what Booker's trying to do is get these guys ready for the next level. And, I mean, as far as with tag teams, it, it's you can't learn from a better guy than, than Booker. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, another promotion that I know you're, uh, you and Kurt are a part of uh, that seems to be doing really great stuff is Wildcat uh, out of New Orleans. Uh, uh, they seem to be another promotion that's really on top of things when it comes to you know putting stuff out there and the stuff they do. Uh, what's it like working for them and, and working uh, for Luke Hall? Man, it's 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 great, man. Uh, Luke doesn't pull any punches. He's uh, he's literally uh, out for the best product possible and. You, you just can't say enough about a guy who is going to care about the product that he puts out there. And it speaks for itself. It, it really does. It, it promotes itself. Not that he's, I mean, he promotes probably works harder promoting than, than a lot of people do, but it, it just, it promotes itself. Good, good wrestling, you know, usually has really good responses and that's pretty much what it is. It's, uh, it's captivated that entire area right there and it's only growing from where it's at. Totally, absolutely. Uh, out of your out of your time in professional wrestling and and the people that you've been in the ring with, uh, who would you say that you've you know learned the most from uh, when it comes to you know on shows and stuff like that? Is there anyone that kind of sticks out, or, or maybe somebody who you really enjoy getting to work uh, in particular? Man, there's so many guys who who equally uh, I, I I pick brains from, and I can. You know, uh, 
get in the ring. Some, sometimes you can get in the ring with a guy that you've never gotten in the ring with, and it, it, it just hits off. And sometimes you uh, you get in there, and you know there's always that guy that you can have three, four, or five matches with, and everything's great. You know, uh, you know I've I've got some guys down here, you know that uh, that I've equally you know, learned a lot from, and I, I pick everybody's brains each match and treat everything like a new opportunity to learn something or, or even to teach something every once in a while, you know, but, uh, yeah, there, there definitely, you know, there definitely is, is quite a few guys that, that are that way. Definitely. Uh, going, cause you mentioned obviously with working with reality wrestling, how they're very focused on, on getting people TV ready. Would you say that's definitely a big goal of yours is to make it to, you know, one of the major, wrestling promotions right now that that that's on television or or something along those lines man the way i here's the way i feel about it is um uh, i never want to be one of those guys who go out there and say well i'm not here to make it to x place or i'm not here to improve myself because I, the way i feel is if you're not out there to improve yourself and you're not out there to try you're absolute damn just to make it to the next level you don't need to be out there and so um in that I'm the type of person who I would rather do my absolute best and be at the top of whatever echelon I'm at at the time, regardless of anything else, regardless of whether I'm, you know, have a goal to make it, you know, any further WWE ring of honor, wherever the hell it may be. I just want to be my absolute best at any point in time. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, going into some of the, the regular questions we tend to ask here on the show, uh, one of them that we, we like to ask uh, our guests is, what are you watching currently, wrestling-wise, when it comes to either, you know, for recreation or for studying purposes? Is there anything that you currently kind of have your eyes on right now? Man, I, I, uh, I try to share, share off equally. Um, you know, most of the time, if it's coming to look at film, uh, you know, I'll pick somebody and I'll, I'll study, you know, something that they did. I, I'm, I mean, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to just pick one guy and focus on stuff. I'm a, I'm a Chris Jericho, Mark. I mean, <laughs> I, a lot of people know that, but, um, you know, just picking, picking off, uh, different genres, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a freak for the WCW cruiserweight division. So I, I'm, uh, you know, I definitely, definitely play a whole lot on that but you know when i dig down and and look at the original heavenly bodies and uh a lot of simon dean obviously to nice. <laughs> to uh pick out pick out some spots yeah definitely and, and Jer jericho's very interesting because i i feel like that's a guy who i kind of see a lot especially in your performance just sort of you know mannerisms but also just that that personality that he kind of right. over into his wrestling right would you say that's kind of a big thing is for you in particular is just the the personality that goes into to, into your matches? Man, I, I feel like a lot of people, and, and there's some there's some guys who who put out tons of personality, but I feel like in general, um, I want to be you know there's 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 guys who can and work their ass off and have no personality, and there's guys who are all personality and and lack in other places, you know. And I, I just I want to be that person who's absolutely the, the the biggest total package whatsoever and i think a lot of that has to do with your your just your your normal personality in general i think if you're the type of person who's pretty outgoing and can translate everything pretty well and likes to be a little outspoken maybe at times it's going to translate in the ring and um that helps a little bit but uh yeah i mean i definitely guys like jericho who can just go out and and get on the mic and and you know, if you can cut a promo to me, if you can cut a promo, if you can cut a stick on an apple core and sit there and talk about this apple core, you don't need a title belt to sit there and talk about. You don't need uh, a, a certain opponent or a certain goal. You just go out there and cut a stick on an apple core. You know, I think some of those guys are, are the most entertaining that, that, uh, that were like that. I follow, uh, I watch a lot and followed uh, Larry Sweeney, Sweet and Sour. And, uh, I mean, just a guy, I mean, I knew the guy personally, but just a guy that could just sit there and just go on for an hour. And, and it could have been a recorded promo that would have worked on any show, you know, just, just great stuff. Absolutely. Um, and, and going into sort of our final question that we have, and, and it's a, a question that many of our guests take in many different directions, so feel free to. 
Uh, but the, the last thing we'd like to ask is, uh, what is, in your opinion, the best thing about indie wrestling and the worst thing about indie wrestling? Man, so many different ways to go with that one. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, independent wrestling, if I had to pick something out that I felt like was one of the best, I'm not going to pick at it pick at it from my standpoint i'm going to pick at it from a fan standpoint from a fan standpoint um independent wrestling definitely gives that up close um what word am i looking for help me out here um sort of in your, like it's kind of in your face kind of kind oh of yeah yeah definitely i mean d- depending on where you go <laughs> of course <laughs> i mean you're 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 talking from you can't even grade it from one to 10 because some promotions are so farther away from than just nine spots than the other. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's an it's in your face look at something that, uh, you're not going to get anywhere else. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, even, even with your ring of honors and your, your ROWs and your PWGs, it's still, it's still such a much more in your face look at professional wrestling than, than anything else. And I think, uh, you know, especially with man, bringing kids to shows and, and just taking their breath away with something is is just, is just, uh, one of the best parts of it. Totally. Absolutely. And, and, uh, in terms, do you think, do you have an idea of what would you, you, what you would consider to be the worst thing? Uh, the worst thing about independent wrestling, uh, I kind of have to step back into the wrestler's role of that, is that so many people are allowed to do it that not necessarily <laughs> should be. It's just, you know, I mean, we're not talking about guys who are graded by Vince McMahon. We're not talking about guys who were trained by William Regal. We're talking about you know, uh, guys who are given an opportunity, and you know, some of them get that opportunity that shouldn't always get that opportunity and uh you're talking about a genre of guys who some are in the gym five days a week busting their ass getting in the ring learning their craft and then you're talking about a completely separate group who i'm just gonna say don't and you're you're getting a, a, a quite a broad difference between the two and the fact that obviously the right promoters are going to weed out what they want what they don't want and um but that's that's just that's part of it, and I, I don't think that's ever going to change. You know, there's licensing in different states that kind of help weed crap out because certain promotions can't pay for this or that. You know, but um, and, and I say all that just to tie back into sometimes wrestling like that is going to it can destroy the the whole taste in somebody's mouth about independent wrestling and not give it a chance. Mm-hmm. That does happen. You know, you can ruin the town with bad wrestling and make it really, really hard to run. That happens. Happens a lot. But uh, in that same sense, I still believe in, regardless of what it may cost, good product turns out a good fan base. And if you stay with that, if you stay with working with uh, talent, it'll translate. Totally. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you very much, Jared, for coming on the show and talking with us and, and sharing your story. Uh, if people want to find you online or if you have any upcoming events that you'll be appearing at where people can check you out, uh, feel free to uh, plug away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm, uh, of course, on Facebook. I'm pretty much easy to find Jared Wayne and uh, Twitter at the Jared Wayne, Instagram at the Jared Wayne. Um, definitely be looking December the 12th. Uh, Reality of Wrestling, our last show in Clear Lake before we go to our big new venue, uh, Christmas Chaos 10. Um, they're still uh, holding the doors back on all the secrets and all the surprises. There's usually uh, some uh, some big names and some big uh, things going on there. We've had you know Michael Cole come in and do announcing for us, and which opened the doors for guys who are now you know at SmackDown and NXT, but. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've we've got some really big things coming up, but December 12th is uh, going to be the last show there in Clear Lake before they go to their new uh, home. So uh, that's going to be a big deal for Reality of Wrestling, a lot of championship matches, and possibly a championship match for the one and only Sweet and Swole, the Pump Patrol. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> awesome. So def- 
definitely go check you uh, check you and Kurt Matthews out uh, with the Pump Patrol. Uh, anyone who checks out uh, you guys in the ring, I, I can guarantee will definitely be entertained. So uh, if you're listening to this and, and Jared and Kurt are on an upcoming event, be sure to check them out. Uh, thank you again, Jared, for coming on. And right now we're going to take a quick look at everything that happened this past week in Sorgatron Media. We'll be right back. Sawtooth got business to attend to. Welcome to the future and skipping about 10 years of technology. You didn't even have to go through the, the Palm Trio days no, or no, the Blackberry no. days. You didn't even have to go through the days where we didn't have cut and paste on iOS. <laughs> You're playing a professional, right, yeah, who's yeah. playing the wrestling character. So those yeah. two layers exist in the game. The reward systems in the game are all about, like, you can get more cool stuff for your character. You can raise your stats. You can get new moves. Uh, you can get a valet. You can maybe gain more booking authority, change your gimmick, all that kind of stuff. Going on ads in wrestling, I think the uh, the greatest one I've ever seen is the King of the Ring 1998 promo package where it's like Hell in the Cell with Taker and, and Mankind. And it was like First Blood with Austin and Kane. And then it just goes into Super Soaker. It brings you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Super Soaker of Blood. Get it belong to me now. <laughs> ha! Turn the camera off. All right, check out all that stuff at SorgatronMedia.com. Not just for wrestling anymore. We got hobos, we got technology, we got video games, and so much more. Uh, so it is the... <laughs> That's a wide variety of different things. You know, just a couple of different things. Uh, hobos, technology, and video games, and mindfulness, and and serious talk about religion. <laughs> <laughs> eh, we stretch out a little bit. Somebody told me earlier yeah, in the chat when we were talking about that. It's diversifying the portfolio. But anyways, it's Thanksgiving this week, in case you didn't know. It is. And we like to, I mean, I like to take back and like, let's, 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 let's reflect a little bit here. Uh, you and I, of course, are involved for several years at this point in, in, in indie wrestling in our, our various uh ways i guess um yeah. and, and i think it's kind of appropriate to you know, kind of look back and on the year and whatnot and, uh, what are you thankful for in your involvement and the experiences uh any anecdotes from the year you want to share as we get into the things because let's be honest the year end episode will be a drunken mess i want to tell you that right now uh because it will yes. be episode 100 and these sexy talented dudes are scheduled to join us here in studio so and then we and we know what happened when one sexy, talented dude appeared on our show last. That's right. There was brief nudity there, last that, time we had a that, sexy, that, talented dude. That explicit dude. tag was earned. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Um, but anyways, I, I don't know, Eamon, uh, it sounds like things are just kicking butt down there with Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, I, I know you, you've told me about some of the connections and, 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 and friends you've made in the industry uh, off, off microphone here. Uh, I, I, you know, what, what are you thankful for this this holiday season in, in in the world of indie wrestling? Um, I'm really thankful for what I've gotten to do in indie wrestling this year. Um, the particularly for me, I don't know, and I and like I said, I talked to you about this sort of, sort of off microphone. The the concept of just like getting to work with people that you've idolized and and followed for for years is really just a, a fun, cool concept that um. Sometimes I still can't get over. I, I, meant, I think I mentioned to you a couple of weeks ago when we were off air about how I got to do commentary and got and get to work closely with a guy who I remember uh, I would rush home from middle school uh, to to uh, watch Fox Sports Net for when TNA Impact was on Fox Sports Net to see him back when he was wrestling as Dallas, and I'm obviously referring to Lance Hoyt. Uh, I don't know why I tried to jump on. Yeah, people will find out, but uh, I. Yeah, and, and just the fact that I get I get to work with him now is kind of crazy. I uh, getting to work every every year now. I'm getting you know getting to work with our guys is a dream true, and and um, getting to just be around them and, and see the see their sort of uh, creativity blossom is is always real fun. Um, I'm, I'm very thankful for the shows that we've got to put on with Inspire Pro. I think we've really grown a lot in in 2015 and and you know more people know who we are we continue to kind of blossom as a wrestling organization uh i i look back to when we had our first show and there was maybe like 50 people in the crowd and and <laughs> you know some of them were you know people who we kind of knew and stuff like that and now it's 
it's kind of become something and that's real fun. Uh, people, you know, are excited for our shows and they want to see what we do next. And, and, um, that's always a really good feeling. Um, I, I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for all I've got to learn in the commentary world. Um, I'm thankful that people, I'm, I'm thankful that pe- more people are happy with what I do than, than hate what I do, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good feeling. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm thankful for getting to work with individuals who really are um, uh, helpful and so willing to teach and, and, and are, are, you know, glad to see me grow. Um, I, I can't, I couldn't work. I couldn't, you know, be working with a more better group of people right now. Um, I'm very happy with everything that we've gotten to do. Um, and, and if everything shapes out the way things are going, 2016 is going to be even bigger. And I'm so, so excited. Um, I feel like 2016 is really going to be the year where we, you know, nail out all the kinks, so to speak, like all the growing pains, I guess you could say, or, you know, hopefully going to um, uh, subside a bit. And we're finally going to be a, I feel like a juggernaut of, of indie wrestling, uh, at least in the South, hopefully. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited about that. That's awesome. And it's been great to see from afar what you guys are doing down there and, and kind of getting that buzz and, you know, popping off, uh, popping up and stuff like, like inspire or I'm sorry, on smart mark and, you know, kind of getting exposure. is really cool too. Um, that's awesome. That's real awesome. So, um, on my end, what are you thankful for? Zorg? What am I thankful for? One, one, I, I think we've had a pretty tremendous year of, uh, people we've talked to, um, and, and mm-hmm. you know, learning, you know, and I, I, I love the format that we do here where we do switch off every every week. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, <laughs> you know, we yeah. get somebody from your world. We get somebody from my world. And and I get to learn about, how, you know, what is, you know, it's been interesting to kind of notice, you know, kind of the trials and tribulations of uh, what guys are dealing with in that neck of the woods, you know. Because I know, I, I think yeah. I think when you're, you're an indie wrestler up here, at least from what I can judge from afar, um, like it seems like your opportunity is a little closer, you know, um, mm-hmm. the New Jersey, Philly, air, New York area is an insane hub of pro wrestling opportunity, right? Yeah. How many promotions are over there? Ridiculous. And I know a lot of guys we know have been going over there for beyond wrestling, CZW, uh, whatever the case may be. A lot of people we know popping up on ring of honor that tours, tours frequently in the Northeast, right? Um, you know, and, and, and for you guys, you know, those car trips for opportunities are a lot fewer and far between, I believe in, in, in the lower Midwest, I guess, whatever you call your, your region. I think your region is just Texas because it's so big, but still, you know, and, 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 and I think that's, that's a really interesting difference. And then hearing guys that are like from your area that end up in Atlanta. You know, like that's that's a long freaking way away. And and they're they're doing it and they're making it happen. Um, so so you know, when I hear somebody say, Oh, I gotta go to Cleveland next week, it's like, yeah, that's not that big a deal, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing for me to go to Cleveland. Cleveland seems fun. Yeah, yeah, like Cleveland seems like a walk in the park to get up there, right? I mean it's one thing for <laughs> me as a as a video guy, you know, I'm not looking to get discovered, yeah. you know, I, I, in, in my position. Uh, but you know, as a wrestler, you know, to get out there in different regions is is, is far more important than, than what you or I do. You know, um, I don't know, maybe more so for you because it seems like the announcers try to get around a bit. You know, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, for me, it, it's I, I I don't necessarily have a lot of opportunities to get around here just from the fact that there's not a lot of places here that are need, in need of commentators. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I guess I could even expand maybe to ring announcing and maybe that would open up a bit more. But um, other than that, like it's it, the market in that direction is very small here. Right. Uh, we're opposed right. to um, opposed to up in the Northeast and even the Midwest. Like a lot of people are doing DVD production. Uh, it's like, it, like you're not an indie wrestling promotion up there unless you're doing some sort of production in some way. You know what I mean? Right. right and, right. and, I think in Texas and then more in the South, you can exist and still, you know, not do that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's interesting. So, I mean, and again, it's like, what you're not trying to get the same thing out 
of this than than wrestlers. Like they're wanting to go to the WWE, go to get signed, something like that. I can notice you. I mean, I don't yeah. know what your trajectory is, like where you're trying to get to. That's like, like, oh, I have like, no clue. Right like, now. Like, you're just like I'm just doing this, man. You know. And for me, it's yeah. it's 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 more of for me, it's more of the grander business. Right. It's like it's an aspect of the many things we do that are not just pro wrestling around here. You know, it's these podcasts, it's these yeah. podcasts that are not about wrestling, you know, uh, around here as <laughs> well. And we're trying to hit on all of those. Uh, so, again, just kind of different goals and just kind of trying to make sure everybody is is getting bigger and bigger. So um, I, I'm very thankful for um, at this moment, I probably have the best groups of people that I'm working with, you know. Whereas in the past, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, you know, there, I, I kind of worked it because it was wrestling and not necessarily for the people I was working for. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but, but, you know, for whether, and I think everybody's been, been great over the years in general, but um, there's a great group working with both promotions I work with. Um, you know, one very well, good minded towards marketing, social media, trying things. Right. And I think I got a good group of good heads on their shoulders, but getting something together. And the other group just is hardworking, grassroots, great stuff going on. Um, and, and I, both RW and IWC are hitting all cylinders in different flavors. And I, I think it's awesome to see. Um, so I'm blessed to have, have that kind of situation you know um i mean i seriously work for who i believe to be the best promotions you know in the area but hands down you know i can't i can't you know i i do i honestly believe that um and uh you know not not a full sight on anybody else but you know that's you know where i'm at with it Um, i'm also very close to the situation too um very very pleased that you know have the opportunities to you know not just are we like oh it's just wrestling you know uh and i think you you have this too where it's been good wrestling you know yeah in both promotions it's, it's been it's been very good stuff it's been very good stories it's been very good uh crowds you know crowd reactions you know i don't know numbers you're not you know uh, good for good for them you know what i mean um mm-hmm. and really good opportunities for and, and seeing these guys you know <laughs> i'm thankful for seeing uh people blow up like we've been seeing uh darren De Niro and, and Britt baker over the last uh six months has been just yeah. fantastic both of them have just shown up everywhere and 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 we've talked about this you know friends of the show going to wwe and doing these other things you're always you know you know again you know we're not gonna jump up like that and we're not in the spotlight necessarily yeah. but it's but really it's cool to see that happen right and it's really great to see that to people that are uh you feel are a little more deserving you know that you see working yeah. hard or maybe in some cases you've seen putting the ring together for the last couple of years you know and work it out and yeah. see them getting there I'm like oh wow they got this you know and uh and and seeing that that kind of blow up for them and, and just seeing like because i mean you know we've talked about how many times, you know, watching our, uh, Shima Zion's turn into DJ Z, uh, and our Jason Gorey's doing amazing things and our facades and our, and, and, and everybody. Um, and, and you look at some of these and say, well, is Darren and Brit and, and, and some of these other people, are they going to be the next, you know, Shima facades, Logan Chulos, uh, yeah. you know, Sammy Callahan's whatever coming up through, are they going to be the next guys we're going to watch, you know, as they excel, yeah, you know, and 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 remember, you know, eating Denny's with them back in the day. <laughs> you know, that's a good um, point. You know, like I, like that. Like now that you, now that you say that, I think like thinking about it, like the I feel like I could say my best moment from this year, and I know the year's not done, obviously, but my favorite moment from this year probably was the fact that I got to call somebody's last match before they made their way to WWE. Nice uh, in Athena, mm-hmm. and that's a cool honor. Um, that I, yeah, and to just to think about that, and and you know, you being around indie wrestling, you get to know these people, and and you know, you've worked shows with Chulo, and the fact that he's now on WWE is or on NXT, on NXT pretty much is you know a, a cool thing. Like to get to know, get to you you. I don't know. I think when you're not in the indie wrestling kind of business, you feel so disconnected from that world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then to see people you actually kind of got have gotten to know getting that success is is kind of crazy to think about you know 
And, and it works on you. You don't have to be in the business to notice this too. I mean, I we I think we felt the same mm-hmm. way about but but the guys that I mentioned, just seeing them as fans throughout the years, right? You know, that's true. I mean, seeing them in the you know bingo hall gymnasiums and then go to the bigger, seeing them with bigger, bigger crowds and on TV. You know, I mean, it, you don't have to be in the positions we are to notice that. I think that's one of the things about the, even the fandom of indie wrestling, that there's something special there. You know, it's, it's seeing the band, it's seeing the band. It, uh, there was, um, there was, uh, here's a, something that's it's kind of similar to, uh, even have you heard of Evanescence? I, I, I've heard of them once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. They have, they have one of my favorite, uh, WWE paper. You think? So <laughs> Uh, so, but, but I remember, uh, there's a radio station here. Uh, Mark Madden's actually on it now. 105.9 The X. And back in the day when that station used to be cool, uh, they used to do a, um, they used to do like $5 X shows, you know, where they would go to the venue. There's a band that you never heard of. And you go, it's like five bucks or whatever. You can go see them. Right. Um, <laughs> They had one of those shows here, and it's just when the Bring Me to Life song was blowing up, like around the Daredevil yep, movie or something. And they yep. were just blowing up, and they still had the show scheduled, so I think they just had to commit to it. Uh, there were, and they did a in, in they did an acoustic version of the song, uh, which was just mind blowing, you know, out of the you know the radio station. And I remember listening to that, and they were like, "Yeah, uh, go see them. It's like five bucks. Good luck getting in there." This will probably be the last time that you can see them for five bucks, and holy crap, were they right? Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that's kind of the that you know, uh, you see, you know, somebody, and, and you're like, well, this is probably the last time you saw them for a, a twelve dollar ticket, and was able to talk to them, shake them hand, shake their hand, and buy their t shirt from them. You know what I mean? Uh, you right. know, uh, the, you know, been able to you know talk to uh, Cesaro before he was Cesaro, for instance, and now look at him. You know, okay, he's injured now, but still, you get the idea. You know, uh, or any of those guys, it's it's really cool to kind of see uh, something like that. So, uh, really thankful for these opportunities, and and it's really cool to be be a part of it, be a fan of it. You know, whatever the case may be, and I, th- I hope you guys appreciate that we do have a very vibrant, or in your neighborhood, hopefully, a very vibrant wrestling. Uh, community, or at least that you can find stuff online. There's alternatives, and you know, alter- I'm thankful for alternatives in general. I love talking to Raw, yes. talking about Raw last night on the Mayhem Show account, and I can't remember his name, but I told him to keep in touch with me. Uh, but uh, hopefully, I can pull it up here so I can give him a shout out. Uh, but uh, but I was like, hey, uh, you know, what, what are you guys, uh, what you know, what are you guys looking for in Raw tonight? Or, or he said something to that effect, and he, the one guy said, yeah, I want to wait till uh, uh, what Wyatt's come out, see what they got to say, and. Uh, you know, uh, 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 probably watch uh, the, the the tag league tournament or whatever's happening at uh, yeah World Tag League World yeah. Tag League. Thank you. I keep forgetting what that is. Uh, and <laughs> and you know, uh, Mile High Laz at Mile High Laz on the Twitters. Um, you know, there are true alternatives. You know, like like you know, we're talking about yeah, the last show. They, I think more than ever, there are oh, yeah. really more alternatives than ever right now. And even um, and not even like there's new alternatives like, like there are, but there's also hey we can all watch AAA and 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 New Japan, New Japan. You yeah, know? I mean it, this is accessible it, to us. It's so cool. I, I mean, you think of the. I mean, I think when people think of like old indie wrestling, it's a lot of it was like just tape trading and stuff like that. But now the fact that that's that whole concept and that whole the whole difficulty, I guess, of tape trading has been completely eliminated. Like, there's no. I truly feel like there's no better time to be a wrestling fan currently. You know, so, yeah, so. you know, some may think that the WWE product may be kind of stale at this point, but th- as far as being a wrestling fan in general, there, I, I do honestly feel like there's no better time. Certainly, certainly. Well, let's take a look around the indies. Speaking of all the options, our friend Matt Carlin's doing a great column at IndieWrestling.us. Stay, stay tuned to that. If you haven't yet, uh, sign up for the newsletter there at the top of the site, and we'll have info information uh, later this week about the Black Friday sale. The Black Friday sale. Ah. Uh, so go Everybody check. That was a good sale. <laughs> there you go. You can get some uh, indies on the cheap. Uh, that we have there. And again, we have Border City Wrestling, International Wrestling Cartel, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Prime Wrestling, as well as the great documentaries that we've had over 
the years. So please go check that out and support indie wrestling there or wherever you find them. There's also a lot of great stuff on Smart Mark videos, including Inspire Pro Wrestling, including uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, IWC, RWA, Prime Wrestling. All that stuff's on that kind of stuff. I think there might be some stuff on High Spots as well. I know there's some IWC and like Montreal Theory over there. So please go support all that stuff. So, Eamon, well, take us around for a spin around the indies. What did we missed this weekend? Yes, well, Matt Carlin's got us covered. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so uh, the first thing uh, that we want to mention is for Pro Wrestling Syndicate out of uh, uh, Sayerville, New Jersey. They had a, a, their Wrestle Bowl event on Friday, which featured the last uh, wrestling match for Just Incredible, uh, who faced Tommy Dreamer in a hardcore match. Uh, it seemed like some really good stuff there. Uh, also on that show, uh, Matt McIntosh won their uh, Pro Wrestling Syndicate title in a tables, ladders, and chairs match uh, against defending... Against, okay, I just noticed the name on here. Against defending champion Habid from the car wash. What? <laughs> I, let's go with that. And Dan Moff. Who Indie I wrestling, before. ladies and gentlemen, you never know where they'll hail from, yeah. including the car wash. <laughs> from the car wash, apparently. They do things different um, in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, I, I never know. Uh, so it seemed like there's some good stuff from there. Uh, there was also Omega. Uh, this past weekend uh, in Smithfield, North Carolina, their Loco in Joko 3 event. Not sure what that means, but okay. Um, Matt Hardy, who is uh, obviously one of the founders of Omega, won the heavyweight title in a three-way match against Trevor Lee and Ethan Carter the uh, third. <laughs> for those that watch DNA, that kind of makes me upset, but whatever. Um, uh, but hey, you know, uh, it seemed like some good stuff there. Uh, Combat Zone Wrestling and, and Women's Super Southern Center held a uh, co-promoted event uh, with, on Saturday in Voorhees, New Jersey, which was a fundraiser for Cherry Bomb, who recently uh, uh, suffered a shoulder injury uh, that's been uh, put put her on the shelf, basically. Uh, it seems like some good stuff from there, including a, a mix or an intergender tag team match with uh, Team Tremendous, uh, Bill Carr and Dan Barry defending their CCW tag team titles against the Dollhouse from TNA, mm-hmm. uh, Jade, who is uh, Mia Yim and Marty Bell. Uh, there was a lot of great stuff seemingly on that show, so definitely go to check them out, uh, CCW and WSU. Uh, uh, Wrestle Jam 13 uh, was Saturday in Bristol, Connecticut. Uh, the main event, Hollow Wicked, defended the Wrestle Jam title against Amazing Red of TNA fame. Uh, seems like some really good stuff here. Shinron, uh, who if you've not seen Shinron before, uh, from uh, works mainly for Chikara Pro and for uh, Beyond Wrestling. Very, very talented individual. Uh, defended the CLL International All-Star title against Johnny Gargano. Uh, Chris Hero and JT Dunn defeated the Colony. Kimberly defeated Veda Scott. Uh, seemed like some really good stuff out of uh, Bristol, Connecticut. So definitely go check that out. Uh, there's also stuff uh, to go through some of the other stuff that you can check out on Indie Wrestling at US, NWA Smoky Mountain, Ohio Valley Wrestling. Uh, seems like some good stuff there. Uh, IWA Mid South. Uh, definitely a lot of cool stuff happening in the world of indie wrestling this week. Uh, you can get a scoop of all of it over at IndieWrestling.us uh, at the Around the Indies column. Thanks to our good friend, Matt Collins. There you go. Uh, some, uh, geez, hopefully future friends of the show. I need to line these these girls up. Uh, but uh, Jesse Bell and Raylan uh, uh, were actually both on a show uh, with OVW Wrestling. I always like when like 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 people from two different feds that I follow here locally, like, converge somewhere along the line so <laughs> right uh i mean <laughs> that's just for a personal of me looking out uh, saying oh, these people are mixing these it's like when your two friend groups like like match together and you're like ah you know um but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you like like people you shouldn't think you didn't think would match like yeah yeah i see, I see what you're saying yeah yeah um well like, you're my rwa people you're my I-, you know you know that kind of thing that's why i always <laughs> like that that's why i was like that ov uh vow initially because it was always like those two mixing but like just further down the road you know what i mean um but but i gotta gotta point out uh ray lynn's uh twitter they were apparently taking selfies uh during the uh battle royal (laughs) with uh uh, rebel who's rebel tna uh rebel from uh from tna wrestling she's the other member of the dollhouse she was once in the uh she was in the menagerie stable for them oh. for our, our old TNA buffs. Oh, thank you. Thank you for clarifying some TNA-ness for me. Uh, so, <laughs> so go check that out on there as well. Uh, IndieWrestling.us. Amen. it's been fun. Whoa. It's been fun. So I'm not going to do whatever I just did. That was a weird sound. Sound like a 
works now. <laughs> uh, but hey, thanks uh, so much. Uh, hey guys, check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So much stuff going on there. A little later this week, of course, because of the holiday. We'll be right back next week. Full force with everything pro wrestling. And then we're going to take a little bit of hiatus. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, again, December 15th is going to be Indie Mayhem Show 100. Hitting the triple digits. Holy jokes. crap. We sustain, we are sustaining a weekly episodic interview show for a hundred episodes coming up. Can you believe it? How did that happen? <laughs> How did we do that? It's like, Eamon, I want to start a new show with you. And this is what happened. And, we think, and I think we had some really great conversations uh, th- this year. Um, um, really, geez, holy crap. We, we talked to somebody from every major not WWE promotion, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> this year. Like, it. like that was currently in with them. Uh, Zima from TNA, uh, 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 Ray Rowe and Cedric Alexander, both from Ring of Honor. And, uh, and of course, uh, Chris Joseph of, of Lucha Underground. I think it was a tremendous year. Uh, and, and not including just, just the, the plenty of great personalities that we talked to uh, over, over the year and, and people not in wrestling. Uh, RPGs, video games, all kinds of people into stuff. Uh, it's been a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. So very thankful for the wonderful guests that have taken the time out to talk with us uh, over, over the mm-hmm. past year, over the past two years, actually, on this show. Um, so... I hope we've uh, gained a focus on on indie wrestling for you guys, and 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 provide some great conversations for you. I know I've been great feedback uh, uh, a lot of times at the shows, uh, and anyway, I think you 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 said you get the same thing. Uh, just yeah. the wrestlers. It's, like- cool have, it's 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 cool and also very scary that people come up to you and and tell you that they listen to such and such show, and it's like, oh, <laughs> it, it's it's it's. it's 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 cool. It's very cool, but definitely very much kind of a uh, uh, interesting interesting that that you know people in the wrestling in your wrestling circles are are in, you know in touch with this show. So it's, exactly. It, but like I said, it's very cool. Don't be strangers out there. And and if 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 uh, you're like, why? When am I getting on the show? Just let me know. I, you know, it's hard for me to remember. Or I want on the show. You know, how many people I got to on the show this year that I've been wanting to get on the show for like over a year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we only have fifty episodes a year, and you and I both book twenty five of them. So. We only, ha- you know, it's just, you know, I have two spots a month, you know, for 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 my circles. So, all right, that's enough. Aim and at aim and two, please on the tweeters. The voice of Inspire yes, Pro indeed. Wrestling. I'm at Sorgatron. Inspire. Yeah. What? I was. Oh, I was just sorry. I was gonna say at Inspire Pro Res as well. Yes, of course, and of course, Sorgatron Media Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Sidekick Media Co. on the Twitters as well, and Sorgatron Media. Hit me up any of your thoughts on the other podcast, wrestling or otherwise. We'll see you guys next time and please support indie wrestling. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.